Hey everyone, uh, today I'm going to be making a tutorial of um, a slingshot control scheme, so like clicking on an object, dragging back, and then judging the power of that object's movement based on how far the mouse is from that object. Uh, this is being made for a YouTube user named Fitzgerald Lemicella, I think it's pronounced. Um, I got a comment from them saying, uh, I want to achieve something a little different, so instead of getting the object to move in the direction of the swipe, I want it to go the other way when the mouse is released, like a catapult or bow and arrow sort of action. So this is um, a starter for that kind of movement. So it's nice and simple, there aren't any sprites in this one, I've just got a room and an object without a sprite. So the room size doesn't matter at all. Um, and then I've just got a sprite here, well not a sprite, a, uh, an object here called obj4. Alright, so we'll start off the, the create event as normal. Okay, so for this we initialize a few variables. Uh, first one being the maximum power that uh, we're going to let the player make this thing move. So, for me I've set it to 30, I found that to be a fairly decent power. Um, this power relates a lot with the friction though, so that's how much this thing will slow down every step and that's set to 1. So if that was set lower, then I would also lower the maximum power to make sure that it's not going to go flying out of control. Alright, um, POW stands for power. I would set that to 0 initially, um, and that will be changed later on in the step event. That's a variable used um, for keeping track of the actual power that we're applying. Uh, DIR stands for direction, that's also set to zero, and we're going to be using that to keep track of the direction between the mouse and the object, so we know which way that this object is going to move. Um, SPD stands for speed, uh, we set that to zero, and that's going to be the movement speed that the object is currently moving every step. Um, M direction, uh, that's the direction that we want the object to be set to when we let go. Um, for example, if we were to say have the object moving and then start dragging it again and apply the direction directly the object would then turn while it was moving um, which would give some strange results so we have a separate variable um, so that way when the object is actually being dragged we're not directly changing anything and we can apply it later on All right, um, held uh, so that's whether we're currently clicking and uh, making a drag on the object. So we've got that set to false originally. Uh, fricked stands for friction, uh, that's set to 1, so that'll be taking 1 off the speed every step. Um, and then percent is 10. And that is uh, for the percentage of the distance between the mouse and the object. Because one pixel isn't very far and we're using point direction to get the, uh, the power, by using a percentage we can reduce this um, number dramatically and make it so that you can drag further out and have um, a bit more ease in the precision um, when you're setting the power and you'll see how all that works all right, so that's the uh, create event now I'm going to move from there directly to the draw event to show you how we're setting this up visually all right, so in the draw event we start by setting the draw color to red and then we just draw a circle, x, y, uh, 32 pixel radius, which gives us a 64 um, by 64 width and height uh, circle, and outline to false to make sure it's a solid circle and not just the outline. Uh, we then have draw set color to C black um, to reset the color back to black, and we're drawing text at, at the mouse position, so mouse x and mouse y, and uh, in quotes here we have power for our first part of the string. So, because it's in quotes, it is a string. Um, plus, um, and then string POW, and that's the variable that we made in the create event here. Um, POW, which is the uh, the power um, that we're getting from the actual mouse drag. So we'll be able to see what power we're applying while we're dragging the mouse. Okay, um, and the reason that's in the uh, string command is to make sure that, that gets converted to a string. If it's not in the string command, you will get an error by trying to add a string and an integer together because the data types are different. Alright, that's our draw event, and that allows us to see the ball and um, see some debug information on how much power we're actually applying to it. Okay, now into the step event where everything actually happens. 
So um, it's not too complicated. So we start off by checking if the mouse has been pressed. Okay, uh, if it has, we then check the distance between the mouse's position and this object's position. If it is below 32 pixels, which gives us our radius, um, because that can be in a 360 degree circle from the xy position. So as long as it's below 32 pixels from the like from this object's x and y position, then we have clicked on that object and we can set held to true from that point. Uh, next, we uh, handle actually setting the power and direction based off the mouse position. So if held, uh, and that is the same as writing if held equals true, uh, power equals min. Um, this min function gives you the minimum value between the arguments that you enter. In this case, we are entering percent times point distance, uh, so x, y, so this object's x and y position, and mouse x, mouse y, which will give us the distance between uh, this object and the mouse x and y, um, divided by 100. And that gives us our percentage. So the percent variable is set in the create event before, and that's set to 10 at the moment. So that's 10% of the distance between uh, mouse x and y and this object's x and y. Um, and again, with the reason we're using a percentage is because that way we're not having such a sensitive um, power value between like dragging the mouse out from the object. Alright, so, um, and then for the second argument for this min function, we have max power. So um, the best way to explain this is, so max power is set to 30. Um, and that stays the same, because um, that's what we set it in the create event. Right, so the smallest value between, like, out of those um, is what the min function will return. So, uh, pal, if the percentage uh, returns a value below 30, pal will be equal to percent times point distance uh, divided by 100, which could be, say, 25. Um, if at any point that percentage starts returning a number higher than the max power, then the max power is now a minimum value out of the two, and instead power, or so, sorry, POW for power, um, will return 30 because that is our maximum power. So this min function returns the value of the argument that is the smallest out of the entered ones, and I think it can enter up to 16. Uh, in this case, we're just using two. Okay, uh, after that, uh, nice and simple DIR, which is the direction that we want the object to move, um, is point direction mouse x, mouse y, x, and y. Um, so the reason, and this is important to get the uh, object to move in the correct direction, so the reason we're doing mouse x and mouse y um, and x and y in that order is because we want the direction to be from the mouse to the object, not from the object to the mouse. So that way the object will move in the opposite direction um, from the mouse. So if we push the mouse up away from the object, so in an upwards direction, then the object, when we release the mouse, will go down away from the mouse. Right, um, after that, so we've got our POW and DIR uh, value set. When you release the mouse button, we want to send the object on its way. So to do this, we set SPD. Uh, to be equal to POW, um, M direction, uh, which stands for move direction, uh, to be the direction set here, um, and then held equals false because we're no longer holding the object, and POW we set back to zero. Alright, um, so now the actual movement of the object. So right now we're just setting values so that we're good to go. Now we actually have to move it. So if SPD is higher than zero, um, which happens up here when SPD gets set to POW, which is this min value here. Okay, so if SPD is higher than zero, then X plus equals length direction X, SPD and M direction, or move direction. Um, y plus equals length direction Y, SPD and M direction again. So that is um, moving our object along based on the direction of a vector um, using SPD for the length and uh, move direction for the direction of that vector. I can't explain that uh, too in depth, so that's pretty much the best I can do. 
Um, so if you don't get that, that's my bad. Just check out the uh, Game Maker manual. If you don't know how to get that, if you just type the function and press F12, it'll uh, bring it up just like that. Okay. Alright, so now we uh, handle friction so that the object doesn't go flying off the screen and just keep going forever. So to do that, we go if SPD minus fricked is higher or equal to zero, SPD minus equals fricked. So uh, remember, fricked stands for friction, and SPD is the speed that our object is currently moving. So in this case, we're making sure that um, if SPD minus our fricked value, so is higher or equal to zero. So this would be true if SPD was equal to two, because fricked is set to one. So SPD minus two equals one, so that's higher than zero. Or if SPD was equal to one, um, fricked is still equal to one, so SPD minus one equals zero. Um, this would still return true. In which case, we're safe to subtract our friction um, from our speed value, which would in turn slow it down. So if this uh, if SPD equaled 1 at that time and we took away our fricked value then SPD would then be equal to 0 um, and this would no longer be executed because this is only ex executed when SPD is higher than 0. Um, if this isn't true and SPD was uh, equal to a value say 0 0.5 then SPD minus 1 is lower than 0 in which case we just directly set SPD to 0. Um, and if we didn't do that, then our object would slow down and then start moving backwards because our SPD value would um, be lower than zero. Actually, no, that's not right because this actually only executes when SPD is higher than zero. Um, but if we did SPD is lower or higher than zero, then it would um, move backwards. But for now, we'll just do higher than zero because that's how we want it to work. Alright, so yeah, that's it. Um, so we start off, I'll just go through it really quickly again. We start off by checking for mouse press and make sure the mouse press is within the object's um, width. If it is, then we're holding the object. If we're holding the object, we set the power and direction uh, between the uh, mouse and the object. When we release the object, we set the SPD to be equal to the power, the move direction to be equal to the direction. We set held to false and we set power uh, to zero. If the speed is higher than zero, then we need to move our object. So we do that here. And then we need to also apply friction, which is done here. Alright, now we're ready to run the game. Okay, so here's our game. So you can see at the mouse it says power is zero. And this here is our object. So if we click outside, you can see nothing happens. If we click and hold it inside, we start getting a power value. Um, and that is again 10% of the distance between our mouse and the object. So the closer my mouse is, the lower the power, the further away the higher. And you'll see that the power never goes above 30 when I move it further away. Okay, so when I let go, then the object moves as if it was being like a slingshot. So you stretch back the elastic, let it go, and off the object goes. Um, so this is kind of control scheme is often seen in uh, like flash pinball games um, where you like drag back the uh, the pull stick and let go to hit the ball um, on the way. So as you can see, uh, not too complicated. Um, I'll save that project and upload it. Uh, there'll be a link to that in the description, so that way if you don't want to type it all out and just want to see the project. You can download that um, from the link in the description. Um, subscribe, like if it helps you, you know, all that social networking stuff. Um, if you're interested in keeping up to what, sorry, keeping up with what we're actually doing, uh, follow us on Twitter. We post screenshots, GIFs, and that kind of stuff of our current, like, of the projects that we're working on. So if you're interested in that, then you can follow us there and keep up to date on that stuff otherwise um, we'll be trying to upload more regular tutorials both on this channel and the NT Games GFX channel which is where we have tutorials on uh, graphics and um, other graphics related topics so yeah uh, come to this channel for programming and go to the GFX channel for graphics tutorials uh, 
see you in the next video and hope this helped you out.